So I want to have a little conversation today talking about separation of church and state. Now, on the heels of all the Kim Davis stuff going on over in Kentucky, I'm seeing a lot of people, primarily Christian, coming out and saying she has the right to express her religious beliefs even while on the job even when that job is a government job, and even when those beliefs affect how she does her job. Now, these are the same people who say we're a Christian nation founded on Christian beliefs, and that should influence our government. So, of course, the idea of separation of church and state is a, a valid topic to be discussing right now. And a lot of people, a lot of these same people, say there is no separation of church and state. Uh, and if you look at the Constitution, if you look at the Bill of Rights, never once does it use the term separation of church and state. But we have to ask ourselves, is the intent there. The term separation of church and state comes from Thomas Jefferson. Okay? He was once asked in writing to describe the intent of the First Amendment. And when he got to the portion that describes religious freedom, he used the term a wall of separation between church and state. So the intent is there. Thomas Jefferson helped write the First Amendment. He's one of the founders of our nation. And the intent was there by the founders. Now, we as gun owners like to use the intent of the founders all the time when it comes to describing our Second Amendment rights and using that intent to defend ourselves against people who want to strip our rights away. So if we accept the intent for the Second Amendment, we have to accept the intent for the First. So the intent is there. It's done. It's over. Accept it. Now we have to determine whether or not it's a good thing. Is separating government from religion a good thing? The short answer is, of course it is. Do you want anybody's personal beliefs, whether they be religious in nature or political in nature, to influence the government that has control over us? Sure, you may say you don't care if a Christian gets into office and uses their Christian beliefs to affect your life and affect the government and how it controls certain aspects of your life, but what if they were Muslim and they believed in Sharia law? What if they're a communist or a socialist or a Marxist? You see where I'm going here. We want our government to, for all intents and purposes, be as asexual as possible. We want them to be not beholden to one particular person's religious beliefs, but to the entire population's liberties and freedoms. And when you start to include personal beliefs to people who have power over us, whether it's the taxes we pay or the roads we drive on, it turns into a very, very bad thing. We see enough of it already. Let's not add to it. So, in the end, separation of church and state is a thing. It's there. It's been done. Deal with it. And it is a good thing.